Hi, this is Dr. Abai, and I'm here at Glidewell Dental Laboratories, and I want to go over a case with you where a patient presented to me with history of trauma in the anterior region of the maxillary arch with uh, having one tooth evolved and another fractured. So uh, tooth number eight was fractured and tooth number nine was uh, unfortunately evolved. The patient had a bone grafting procedure completed before being referred to me for implant placement and restoration. So. I went over the patient's health history and performed a comprehensive exam, as we always do when we uh, see a patient uh, in the practice. I also collect a lot of information, such as the patient's full arch uh, impression, and I had the laboratory fabricate a surgical guide so that I know exactly where I want to place my implant based on where the final restoration is going to be, so a prosthetically driven uh, implant placement. Uh, during the implant placement, I wanted to create a minimal access flap uh, to the osteotomy site. Uh, the reason for that is because I utilized the cone beam CT scan for the treatment planning of uh, this implant. So I knew exactly how much bone I had. Based on where my surgical stent is located, I know exactly where I want to place my implant. So I go ahead and create a uh, minimally invasive papilla sparing flap to access the bone. I, I go through the osteotomy. So I'm just going through the steps of the osteotomy to uh, widen it in this situation. And when I have my osteotomy completed, and prepared, I can go ahead and place my implant. The implant is placed at the bone level in this situation. We go ahead and place our temporary component. I also had the, uh, the lab fabricate temporary uh, abutment and a temporary crown, so I can go ahead and try that in. At the time of the surgery, I felt comfortable loading this implant uh, because of the stability. And here what I'm doing is I'm converting the cement retained temporary crown into a screw retained. So I go ahead and uh, utilize a resin cement and bond uh, the temporary abutment to the temporary crown. and. I'm almost reverse engineering this, so I go ahead and create a hole where the screw access is. Before I cement it, obviously, I covered everything with some Teflon, so I can just go ahead and remove that Teflon. And now I have a screw-retained crown. So this is ready to be delivered at the time of implant placement. And not only does it serve as an aesthetic type of temporary restoration for the patient to go home with, it also helps the uh, gingiva and the tissue be created around that implant temporary restoration. So uh, when the patient comes back at a future date, we can visualize how well the papilla has been formed around that temporary. So I go ahead and deliver the temporary crown and, and the temporary abutment. That's one unit now as a screw retained restoration. I place my sutures and the patient is ready to go through a period of healing and osteointegration. You have to be very careful, obviously, with immediate loading, and uh, we give the patient some uh, instructions on how to take care of this temporary restoration. Obviously, you can't treat it like a permanent restoration. Even, even when we do place a permanent restoration in this situation, uh, we don't want the patient to uh, go and, and treat it like he would his natural teeth, obviously. So this is how things look at the day of the procedure, and then one week later, uh, the tissue is starting to form. Over the next several months, uh, you can make adjustments to the temporary to really help the tissue move up or down, depending on what your temporary looks like and what the contours of the temporary are. So we move on with final impression making for the restoration. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually capturing an impression of the patient's full arch. I want the laboratory to fabricate a temporary for me for tooth number eight. I have a nice impression and uh, we want to go through the, the wax up and the temporary fabrication so that I can go ahead and prepare number eight for a final uh, restoration. Also, if you can note that the patient does have a crossbite and we discuss orthodontic treatment for this patient and at this time, uh, the patient decided to not go through with orthodontic treatment. I'm a very big uh, fan of getting orthodontics done even before the implant is placed. 
So we recommend that to most of our patients in this type of situation. The patient went ahead with the uh, with the treatment for the preparation of the crown on tooth number eight. And if you can notice on uh, tooth number nine, it's still temporized and we're just gonna let the tissue heal. This is a couple of months after uh, the implant is placed. I'm ready to go ahead and take a final impression of this restoration. And also I'm ready to take a final impression of the uh, implant crown so that we can go ahead and have the laboratory fabricate our final restoration. I utilize the two core technique for the for the permanent crown and I use a closed impression tray for our implant. And in this scenario, the closed impression tray is in place and I remove the uh, second cord that I placed in there and I go ahead and pick up the uh, impression of permanent crown on tooth number eight and also the implant crown on tooth number nine. So this is a two-step technique for the uh, final impression and once the impression material sets we can go ahead and remove and uh, visualize uh, to make sure we have all our margins. And in this scenario I go ahead and reline the biotemp and trim it and the patient is ready for delivery of the final restoration at the next visit. So once I reline my temporary and uh, trim everything, uh, make sure I have nice clean margins, I'll go ahead and cement. And you want to be careful because obviously you don't want to have the cement creep down to where your uh, where the shoulder of your implant is. So uh, you want to make sure that you uh, go ahead and clean the temporary cement really well. We also use a temporary cement that's radio opaque, so you can take a radiograph and make sure that you didn't leave any behind. So that's going to be really important uh, for the adjacent tooth of where your implant is. So again, just taking the bite registration and posing arch so that the laboratory can fabricate two final restoration for the patient. So now the patient comes back for the delivery of the final restoration and go ahead and remove the temporaries and I want to seat the final restorations and try them in and make sure that they meet the aesthetic requirements of the patient and also I want to make sure that they meet our standards for, for function. Again, this is one of those situations where the crossbite is going to affect the final outcome and the patient is aware of that. So I have to go ahead and make some adjustments. In the anterior, the patient's almost in edge to edge, and as you go uh, to the posterior of the arch, he is in crossbite. So we get his occlusion adjusted, and it's time to uh, deliver the final restoration. The crowns are, are delivered in, in different ways, where the crown for the natural tooth is cemented, and the crown for the implant is, is a screw retain crown. So different techniques for that. So the final restorations are in place and integrated uh, very well across the arch and a radiograph uh, shows a uh, nicely osseointegrated implant restoration uh, with a screw retained crown for the final outcome of this case.